Hey developers, today we're going to take a look at the five reasons why you shouldn't become a software engineer. I'm going to do a quick reaction video to some of the comments that I've gotten and talk a little bit about my motivation for this video. I think you guys really, really liked it. Some of you really hated it. So I thought we'd just talk about that for a moment. But before we get too far, let me have a quick word from our sponsor. This video is brought to you by Coursera. Now, if you're not familiar with Coursera, they're an amazing teaching platform. They have dozens and dozens of very specialized, high quality courses. The one I want to recommend to you today is developing applications with Google Cloud Platform. It's basically four courses in one. If you look in the description below, I have a link to the course. You can actually try out for free for seven days. So make sure you do that. Make sure you click on that link so you can learn all about creating Google Cloud apps on the Google Cloud Platform. Check it out, thanks. All right, so for those you don't know, I'll include a link here. You can see it in the description and also above. Uh, I did this video a couple of weeks ago on October 12th on the, almost a month ago, on five reasons why you shouldn't become a software engineer. And really the reason I did this video wasn't because I'm trying to discourage people to become software engineers. And in fact, it's quite the opposite. I'd love to have software, I love to have more people in this field. I'd love to have beginners. I love to have people that are, um, that are switching fields. I think it's great to have a lot of diverse, smart people in this field. And I really enjoy that. In fact, I created a video called five reasons why you should become a software engineer. Obviously it didn't get as many views um, as this one, but it, uh, it was kind of the reasons why you should become one. So this was kind of playing devil's advocate in this video. And, you know, over 16,000 people watched this video and I've gotten, you know, a, over a hundred comments on it and a lot of people put a dislike on this video. So first I put right here and I put a comment at the top that like, hey, look, I'm not trying to discourage you from becoming a software developer, but there is reasons why you may consider not to become a software engineer. And I even included a link to my reasons why you should become a software engineer. So uh, yeah, I'll just kind of go through this. There's actually some comments that I need to review that I haven't. I don't think I'll do that on this video. Uh, one other thought on this is that uh, software engineering is kind of the cool hip thing to do. A lot of people want to get into this field because they know it's good money. It's good money for your family. And I think at the end of the day, you need to do it for the right reasons. So if you're just doing it for the money, that's going to be the wrong reason. You're going to get burned out. It's not going to be good for you in the long term. On the other hand, if you like puzzles, if you like kind of the cool things you can do as a software engineer, like create something from nothing, if you don't mind, you know, sitting at a cubicle all day and, and being able to be creative that way and you're not, you know, not necessarily going to be out there in the field or working with people all day long. You're really work, going to be working mostly on a computer. Obviously, you're going to have coworkers. You're going to have to deal, you know, work with them on a day-to-day -day basis. But for the most part, you're going to be working with a computer. That is awesome. If that's what you like, you should do it. But if that's not, uh, that's not your cup of tea, then you shouldn't become it. So let's take a look at some of these comments here. I'm, I haven't looked through these beforehand. I've commented on some of them. So the first one uh, is has 35 upvotes. Is this guy serious? Because it's hard. That's one of the reasons why you should do it. It's about challenging yourself and growing. Self-taught developers are here. Say, do what you want. Uh, so I, I responded to this one. I, I said, I, I agree with you there. Not everyone thinks like us. Some people look at this field and don't want to grow. Congrats on being a self-taught developer. That's become That becomes harder and harder nowadays. You know, one people, a lot of people criticize this video because I told people you shouldn't become a software developer, developer because it's hard. And the, and my thought process behind that was this is a difficult field to get good at. I mean, web development, I think is, is usually the low hanging fruit of new developers that want to get into this field because you can literally take a three month boot camp and become a, a web developer and you can sort of get into it, even though the bootcamp just teaches you the, teaches you the bare basics. But even then, there's just so much more that this field has to offer, and and it can become very very difficult for some people to really grasp and understand and become a good software developer. And if you don't have the dedication to put in those long hours to to work and really learn outside of school or the bootcamp or be able to put in, you know, hundreds of hours of self-taught time. You I mean, this is going to be pretty, pretty difficult. Even, um, even guys that have taught themselves in, in, 
in several months and gotten jobs have said like how difficult it was with their first job and how much they had to really work their butt off to do well. So I think that is a detriment to this field. I mean, you could say everything's hard, but this this is a difficult field to get into. And I think it's worth mentioning that that might be a reason why you shouldn't do it. And some people's brains are just wired differently. Like I'm not very good at art. I'm not very good at design. Some people may not like the kind of puzzles and, and challenges that you have to do in software development. That might be really hard for some people. And, you know, it's hard for most people, in fact. Well, I'll take the risk. You know, once again, people kind of took this video as I'm telling people not to do it and that I'm trying to discourage people, um, like trying to like save face. You know, I'm just kind of giving an alternative idea of why maybe you shouldn't do it. I'm not doing it for money. So Coding with Paul says, I'm not doing it for money. Love sitting in front of my computer. I'll make this a little bigger. Let's see. Maybe that's a little, little easier to see. Uh, I'm not doing it for money. L love sitting in front of my computer for hours and hours. Don't mind banging my head against the keyboard. Constant learning. Success not guaranteed. Yeah, so coding with Paul, you would be the perfect person for that. You know, if you love um, sitting in front of the computer, it's not just doing it for money. I mean, that that's a good start. Men are underrepresented in bikini modeling jobs. We need reservation for men there. Uh, that's one other thing people... <laughs> kind of got me on first uh during the video i i said underrepresented a few times i kind of mispronounced that underrepresented is the correct pronunciation so if you heard that in the video that's what i did once and i you know i think this is not really fair it's the reason is not just that um that you know it's bikini modeling is somehow somehow um you know, analogous to, to software development jobs. It's really that the industry hasn't done a great job at, at getting women into this field. There's a lot of horror stories of women being uh, into the, in this field that have been belittled, that have had to work harder than their colleagues, their men colleagues, because they have to prove themselves. Um, I, I definitely don't, I definitely think that there's something wrong here. And I, I think there we can do better to get more and more people of every minority and every, you know, women, every, everybody to get into this field and we can do a better job of that. And I don't know answers of how to do that, but, but it's certainly, uh, certainly worth trying. It's not difficult for women to get into tech. They just aren't choosing to do it. Literally no fortune 1000 companies are discriminating against women. In fact, they're seeking them out. They're just out outside any project management UX that, that is, I think that's verifiably wrong. It's uh, from the stories I've seen from, I believe Google just went through a whole restructuring of what they, they looked at uh, who they were hiring and they were trying to get more minorities. They're trying to get more women. And they were realizing that uh, even women were getting paid less than men. I think this is a complicated subject. I, I don't believe that this is true whatsoever. Um, I just don't agree with it. Do not listen to this advice. Don't let any of this rubbish stop you from choosing a challenging, rewarding career. So a lot of people took this, this really personally. Like I was telling them, don't listen, you know, like do, don't become a software developer. And I think people just took it the wrong way. And I even commented on this, Hey, prove me wrong. My next video will be five or somebody. You should become a developer. Um, and I like this comment. Yeah, he's right. But every job is still a good job. It has its bad parts. All right, so here's another comment. Arg, by Nor Ducci. Arg, would you stop this mess for representation of the facts? I have been in the industry for more than two decades, and women have been treated with nothing but respect. Do yourself and the rest of the world a favor by going to the Department of Labor website to see what jobs are demanded by both men and women. Women are not. Uh, you know, I, I really disagree. I, you know, if he, if Nor, Nor Ducci, if you are listening right now, con leave a comment below. And let's get you on the let's get you on on an interview, a quick interview. I'd love to talk to you about this. You know, I've I've been in the industry for over ten years, and I've I can count on my hand how many times I've I've been in a team with women. You know, and I can see many different instances where women haven't been treated great. Now, this isn't always the case. There's many times women have been treated really well in this industry, and that it's just I don't think that's that's common. And, um, I think there can, we can do better. 
Lack of women in computer science has nothing to do with discrimination or hostile environment. Women are less drawn to the subject, just as men are less drawn to, say, biological sources. Yeah, once again, people really, really hated that point. Not everybody, but there was definitely the vocal minority didn't like how I said how women are un underrepresented in this field. It, it is true that, but that when that there are less computer science majors and therefore there's less people getting less developers out there in general. But I think there's there's a problem before then, even like why women aren't getting into these fields that we need to take a look at. I feel like they should combine college and boot camps. Colleges give you theory and comprehension of programming. And boot camps give you experience on the latest technologies. I kind of want a college to have a boot camp style training during the last six months. Students would take the first three and a half years learning software development. This is kind of an interesting idea. I think a couple of people mentioned this, like this idea of taking your college and a boot camp together. Actually, some colleges have a boot camp program. So if you kind of like that college aspect, they a the, uh, few colleges offer that. Uh, I think the jury's still out. Some people I've, I've heard, they just hate the computer science programs because it's too much theory and too much math and not enough practical programming. And sometimes they don't teach you some of the things that you need in your job. And then people hate boot camps. They think it's just as, it costs almost as much as a semester to college and it barely gets you prepared for, for uh, the job environment too. Or some boot camps now have like shared, uh, salary sharing. So now you have to give up like $20,000 or 20% of your income for the next five years. So, you know, I don't think there's any perfect solution to this. All right. I will do a couple more since we're kind of running along here. You pretty much have to code two to four hours a day. A way to do it is to build a couple projects, traversing media and coding phase, etc. Learn algorithms and build a portfolio of GitHub. In my experience, that's the way to get in. Just make sure you dissect the projects you build so you can explain them very well. Yeah, that's definitely great advice. You know, putting in several hours a day, uh, build some projects. I would also add my name to this list because I have some great tutorials and projects you can create. <laughs> uh, learn algorithms. I have some great algorithm videos too. And also my buddy Coding Tutorial 360, he has some great, he has a whole algorithms course, which I'd recommend. And build a portfolio of GitHub. Yeah, those are all great things to do to prepare to get a job in tech. Um, I don't think, uh, fortunately in my experience, that's the way to get in. I don't, you know, I, from talking to my friends that do hiring and, and what I've seen, this is not enough to get in really. You can, um, you build projects, get a portfolio together. You're going to have to really wow the first employer that you get to and anything you can do to stand out will help you and being able to go through the interviews, just getting the interview is going to be really tough, especially if you don't have a degree or a boot camp or something behind you. Uh, I think this is a great start though. Okay. Last question that I'll answer here on this video. I think another one is how big of an ego people have in the industry. So many developers I have met who are barely mediocre are under the impression that they know everything and are better than everyone else. I'm not sure what it is about this industry that causes people to have such egos. I honestly don't think I have met and uh, I don't see the rest there. I think what he's trying to say is that uh, definitely people in this industry, like many other, many other industries where it's competitive, people have egos, people, I mean, it's, it's pretty common if you go into a software project. Um, and you, it's kind of a legacy project or some other developers work on, worked on it and you come in, everybody thinks that the last developer's code is crap. It's kind of commonly true amongst developers. We always kind of put each other down. You know, it's, it's kind of sad that we do that. And there's definitely people with huge egos in this industry. Um, it's, there's also kind of a fine line to be, to be confident in your skills and to be proud of what you work on, but then coming off as egotistical, so, I mean, obviously if you've been in the industry for a while, you understand software development really well, you need to be able to, uh, teach people what you know. I think that's, that's one way to help with the ego problem. Instead of just kind of being like, this is the right way to do it. Try to approach problems where, where you can teach a junior developer the right way to do things and not to come out, come back as egotistical. That's what I try to do. And then also try to take the other person's perspective. So if they may disagree with you, try to figure out like what's the root cause, what's the right answer to things. 
and just try to be a little bit humble too and realize you don't know everything and that you're always learning. That's kind of the approach that I take. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people that don't take that approach. And uh, people entering this industry, especially uh, junior devs who who may um, deal with these type of people, it's it's hard to work with those people. And a uh, couple of nice comments here. Okay, so that's my quick thoughts on on the 10, five, five uh, reasons why you shouldn't become a software engineer. That's my quick reaction to some of these comments. I mean, I'm, I'm glad that this video created a little bit of controversy and that there were so many people that came out to, to comment and, and to tell me, you know, they really wanted to be, they really want to become software engineers or they really worked hard because you I mean, they deserve it. I mean, it's, I'm not trying to tell you not to do your dream. I think there's a, there's a video by Jerry Seinfeld where they asked him, you know, what they could do to become a stand-up comedian and Jerry Seinfeld told them not to not to become a stand-up comedian and it was his way of kind of preparing the comedian that you're going to get a lot of rejection and that if your idol tells you not to do it and you still become it then that is that is the right approach that's the way to do it and I guess as someone that has made it into the software development and industry and, and became an engineer um and I kind of doing that same thing to you guys saying, Hey, this is the reason you probably won't be able to do it, but prove me wrong. Um, I did steal that from Jarvis, but he, he kind of came up with that idea too, but I really want to see, I really want to hear what you guys think about this video and my reaction video to this. Let me know in the comments below. If you guys like these type of videos, click that subscribe button, click that comment button. I'm going to try to do some more, tutorial type videos some more teaching videos in the f in the future but i thought i would just uh, kind of do this fun one right now thanks take care